President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky's senior security advisor warned on Sunday that Belarus, which he said Moscow had taken captive, would become unstable if tactical nuclear weapons were stationed there. The decision was made public by Russian President Vladimir Putin on Saturday, intensifying a confrontation with the West and issuing a message to NATO over its military backing of Ukraine. Although Putin claimed that the action would not violate nuclear non-proliferation commitments, the move was not entirely unexpected and it was one of Russia's most overt nuclear signals since the start of its invasion of Ukraine 13 months ago. It is a move towards internal destabilization of the country, according to Alexei Danilov, president of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council. It increases what he called the level of bad view and public rejection of Russia and Putin in Belarusian society. He said on Twitter that the Kremlin held Belarus as a nuclear prisoner. Putin said Russia would not be handing over control of the weapons to Belarus and compared his plans to the U.S. stationing its weapons in Europe. But this may mark the first time since the middle of the 1990s that Russia has established such a station abroad. On Sunday, a senior Zelensky aide mocked Putin's strategy, claiming he is too predictable. Mikhailo Podolyak wrote on Twitter, Making a declaration about tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, he reveals that he is terrified of losing and all he can do is terrify with tactics. Washington, the second nuclear superpower in the world, downplayed worries about Putin's declaration and the likelihood that Moscow would deploy nuclear weapons in the conflict in Ukraine. There is no cause for us to change our strategic nuclear posture, and there is no sign that Russia is ready to deploy nuclear weapons. We are still committed to the NATO alliance's collective defense, a top official in the U.S. government said. The representative stated that Belarus and Russia have been discussing the transfer of nuclear weapons for some time. The probability of escalation to nuclear war remains extremely low, according to analysts at the Institute for the Study of War ISW in Washington. Putin is a risk-averse actor, according to ISW, who frequently threatens to use nuclear weapons without actually doing so to weaken Western commitment. However, the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons criticized Putin's announcement as a dangerous escalation. The possibility of error or misinterpretation is very great in the circumstances of the war in Ukraine. Sharing nuclear weapons worsens the situation and poses a serious humanitarian risk, on Twitter, it stated. According to Putin, Alexander Lukashenko, the president of Belarus, had long desired the deployment. Lukashenko did not respond immediately. Although the Belarusian army has not officially engaged in combat in Ukraine, Moscow and Minsk maintain a tight military alliance. This year, Minsk permitted Russia to send troops into Ukraine via Belarusian territory, and the two countries increased their cooperative military exercises. Putin said that the West is forging a new axis akin to the collaboration between Germany and Japan during World War II on Sunday but denied that Russia was forging a military alliance with Beijing. That is why, according to Western observers, the West is beginning to forge a new axis like the one established in the 1930s by militarist Japan, fascist Germany, and Italy. It was a repetition of a recurring motif in his description of the Ukraine conflict that Moscow is waging war against a Ukraine controlled by fictitious Nazis, assisted by Western powers posing a threat to Russia. These comparisons are rejected by Ukraine, a member of the Soviet Union and experienced destruction at the hands of Hitler's soldiers, as phony justifications for an imperial invasion war. On the battlefield, Ukraine has recently displayed greater optimism towards the grueling six-month battle for the eastern city of Bahmut. As it aims to annex Ukraine's industrialized Donbass region entirely, Bahamut is a key Russian objective. Russian commanders had predicted the city would fall quickly, but these predictions have since faded amid fierce battle. According to the commander-in-chief General Valery Zeluzhny, Ukrainian forces thwarted Russia's attack in and around Bahamut, where the situation began stabilizing. On Sunday, the general staff said that Ukrainian forces had thwarted 85 Russian assaults throughout the previous day in several locations along the Eastern Front, including the Bar Mut region.